A lot of people have been asking me what is my backup solution or more specifically my NAS solution. And I always regret to tell them that I didn't have one other than these tiny My Passport 4 terabyte hard drives from Western Digital. Considering the amount of weddings and YouTube videos I've shot in 2017, I was filling these up faster than before with no sort of redundancy backup whatsoever. So if anything were to happen to these hard drives, then I would be SOL. So I knew I needed a NAS storage of some sort, and I've been referred to things like Drobo, Synology, and QNAP. Actually, a subscriber, his name is Jeffrey, thank you so much, Jeffrey. He put me in contact with the reps of QNAP in the Taiwan division, which in turn got in contact with the reps in the US division to send me a review unit. This is the QNAP TS453B. Now, a fair warning, I am no expert in hard drives nor the computer stuff. I am merely giving you guys a perspective coming from a creative professional background slash consumer. And I think this is more for people like us who are more on the creative side, who wants to make sure that we have proper backup of everything, but not necessarily have a great understanding of the inner workings of this little box right here. And if you're interested in the specs of this particular QNAP model, I'll have the specs flashed on the screen right here. So you can pause the video and take a look at it. Now, going into this NAS storage setup, I've already amassed four 8 terabyte Western Digital red drives. That's a total of 32 terabytes worth of storage. Three of these drives came bare bone, and one I had to perform a very delicate surgical procedure operation on. So red drives are typically very expensive, but the ones that I got, I actually got them at a very good deal. You guys don't have to use a red drive for NAS storage, but these are optimized for that kind of usage. And actually, Best Buy was running a really great deal on this Western Digital external hard drive. And thanks to the folks over at Slick Deals, they let the crowd know that this is definitely worth getting because housed inside is a red drive. So if you're in the market for some red drives and want to save on some money, because trust me, you do, building up something like this is very expensive, keep your eyes out on Slick Deal. The entire setup process is actually very simple. Even putting in the hard drive is very straightforward. No screws necessary, unless you are planning on using SSDs. And the program that comes with a QNAP made it so easy to configure all of my hard drives to RAID 5, meaning that it's using three of the hard drives as storage and the last one as a fail safe. So in the event that one of the three drives fail, I won't lose any of my data. Updating firmware now. Please do not turn off the power. However, the configuration process was what took the longest. It took me nearly three hours of setup before I can actually start transferring any sort of files into the QNAP. I'm not sure if that's normal, if that's supposed to happen, but just giving you guys a heads up in case you guys are looking to pick up the QNAP or any sort of NAS system. And then I also found out, and you guys can probably help me out on this if you guys are hard drive experts, when I configured it as a thick volume, I only had 17 terabytes worth of storage. But when I converted it to thin volume, I got back my four missing terabytes. So in total, I have 21 terabytes of storage right now, which makes sense since it is using one of the hard drives as a failsafe. So I should be roughly getting 21 to 24, right? I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments down below. 
So now let's talk about how I'm planning to use the QNAP system. And I may have a more detailed video in the future regarding my workflow. But the idea of the QNAP is to make it this giant archival drive that I can have quick access to. Meaning all of my finished wedding projects and YouTube videos will go in here. And since it's connected via ethernet, the transfer rate is fast. And I will have quick access to all of my past footage that I can just pull easily from if I need them, which I often do when I make these YouTube videos. And it really just saves me a lot of time because in the past, I would have to dig through these tiny little hard drives just to find one footage. And I usually just give up, go to my YouTube page and download one of my old videos just to use, which isn't bad, but you know, just having the actual original 4K file is super helpful. I do highly recommend the Ethernet connection, but this particular model right here also has a USB-C and a USB 3.0 quick access ports in the front so you can directly connect a computer to access the files as well. Now I know people who typically get a NAS system usually like to get it for remote access to their audio files, video files, and movie files. And they like to use something called a Plex media server, which I believe automatically transcode video files or any files into something a little bit more optimal to play back over the internet on any device that they're using. Now I don't know too much about that. I've used Plex before, but I never set one up. But for the folks that do know what it is and wants to use it as a Plex media server, server, just know that the QNAP can do that. So am I just going to take all my files and dump into just this QNAP solely and never have to worry about it? <laughs> no, having redundancy is a good thing. Now the YouTube videos I shot, I don't really care too much about, but since I do shoot weddings, I like to keep the wedding files for at least a year for the clients. So I am considering a cloud service of some sort. I'm considering Backblaze right now, which I hear good things about. It's only $5 a month for unlimited storage. Should anything go wrong with the QNAP, like the QNAP blew up or my house burns down Austin Evans style, I can actually request them to send me a couple of hard drives to restore all of my missing stuff. So when I do sign up for something like that, I'll definitely let you guys know. And the cool thing about QNAP is that it can automatically back up and upload all your files that you house inside of it to these cloud services as well. So if you are a current Backblaze user, Backblaze, yeah, Backblaze, I'm right. Backblaze user, uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, or Amazon Cloud, just know that the QNAP can do a routine cloud backup for you. If you are a current NAS user, it doesn't have to be QNAP, it could be anything. Let me know how you are exactly using it because I'm genuinely curious. I'm sure there's a lot more to these NAS systems than I'm led to believe. And actually there's something very cool about this QNAP that I haven't gotten to in this video yet, which I'm saving for another video. So stay tuned for that. And if you're not currently on the NAS train, is this something that you guys are considering? Or maybe you're just gonna stick with these WD hard drives. Let me know. And of course, I'll have a link to that in the description box below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.